Hey everybody, Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. Thanks for joining me today. Look, uh, what you're looking at above my head here is what's called a wet to dry flat iron. And uh, they've been popular in the industry and consumers has, have also used them on their hair. Uh, I wanted to address this tool just a little bit today, maybe share some insights with you that might help you understand it a little better. So let's imagine that you have a first time client coming into you for a color service. And what she has is naturally curly hair. She's been using a wet to dry flat iron on her hair about three days a week for the last two years. So actually, you say if she's doing it one minute per section, so each section of that head has had approximately 312 minutes of exposure to a wet to dry flat iron. So if you think about the temperature, the average temperature on wet to dry flat irons, the average temperature is anywhere from 375 to 420 degrees. Pretty hot, right? Absolutely. And, you know, if she has made an appointment to come in for her first color service, visually, as you look at the hair on the outside, you're probably not going to see much. It's still going to probably have some curl in it. You know, I mean, these are the questions that you would ask. Did you ever have a chemical service? She's going to tell you no. So it's like, kind of like that common conversation. All right, so we go ahead and do a strand test. We apply the color to the strand, and within a few minutes, suddenly the hair breaks. It almost disintegrates in your hands, and now we're freaking out. We're going, oh, my God, what happened? So let's kind of back up and do a little analyzation. First of all, <clears throat> let's think about this. In eighth grade science class, we learned that water boils at 212 degrees. So if her hair is wet before she uses the iron on it, and the iron is well over 212 degrees, let's say it's at the lowest end, it's at 365. So literally what she's doing is exposing her hair to boiling water three times a week for two years. And so that means that 312 minutes her hair has been boiled at some point and some time. Okay, now we also know that when we boil hair, that we cause a shift in the disulfide bonds. These are the chemical bonds that hold the hair together, and they only make up one third of the hair and the hair's composition. So every time that we expose the hair to boiling water for a period of 30 minutes, so 312 minutes over two years is like 10 times that 30-minute exposure, we create a shift in the disulfide bonds or we break them. Now, there's a test you can do to see whether or not this theory is accurate. Take a save piece of cut hair on the salon and in, in the salon take it and wrap it around a permanent wave rod and drop it into a pot of boiling water and leave it in that boiling water for 30 minutes at the end of 30 minutes you can take it out of the water and you can <coughs> simply let it dry for the next 24 to 48 hours now what's going to happen is the hair is going to draw in oxygen from the atmosphere so it's going to create its own neutralization process so at the end of that 36 to 40 24 to 48 hours once you take that hair off that rod you will have a curly head of hair now you'll have a curly strand of hair it will be permanently curled because you exposed it to that boiling water. Now, why am I sharing this with you? I'm sharing this with you because we don't have scopes in the salon, so we can't see the hair, what's happening internally. But we have to know this. Here's what science tells us. When you heat the hair, and especially if you heat the hair over 400 degrees, you start to melt the cortex. You start to make it pliable, sort of like when they heat glass and it becomes pliable. We know the hair burns at 451 degrees. So if you have a flat iron, a regular flat iron, not even a wet to dry, a regular flat iron at 450, you had better make sure you're using some sort of a heat insulation product on that hair before you use it. And not all heat insulation products work. Not all heat insulating sprays thermal protective sprays are actually thermal protective. 
The best way to test it is to take and spray a thermal spray on one arm and then take your dryer on its hottest setting, put it on your arm that doesn't have thermal spray, see how long it takes you to feel the heat, probably immediately. Then take the same dryer and put it on the, the, the arm with the thermal spray. If the thermal spray is really good, you probably shouldn't feel any heat sensation for at least 30 seconds. If that's a good thing, that's great. Because remember, when we take flat irons and use them in the hair, we really want to make our passes within 10 seconds. So this gives you a lot of time to test and see how that product works. You might be shocked at how you don't have the protection you think you did. Now, some manufacturers are using uh, silicones to protect against heat. There's nothing wrong with that, but silicone has a, has a melting point or a boiling point. And that melting point is 400 degrees. So if I'm using a silicone spray, that's a thermal spray that has silicone in it, if I'm using a, a heating element that is over 400 degrees, I am probably not going to get any protection. In fact, what will happen is that dimethicone will become pliable and it will have a tendency to, I don't want to, it melts, but it, it becomes pliable. So now it starts to build up on the hair. So it's very, very important that we understand when we're working with these kinds of tools. Number one, I would never recommend a wet to dry iron for a client. I am sorry. I believe that the hair must be completely dry before you use any kind of a flat iron or styling iron on it. I know sometimes people spray hairspray on the hair and they wrap their curling iron around it. And you can see smoke coming off of it. And they say, oh, it's not a big deal. Well, it is a big deal especially if your hairspray you're using has any kind of sugar content in the ingredients because that will cause the hairspray to scorch the hair. It'll also create a smell like burned hair and that will be virtually impossible to get rid of because once you burn the hair, the hair is burned. There's no recovery from that. So those are things to keep in mind. I wanted to share that with you today about the tools that we use and the things to be cautious about because these are some things that we take for granted. Once again, remember hair melts or burns at 451 degrees. So turn down your temp, turn down your temp, take finer sections and make sure the hair is dry when you're using your hot tools. And I think you'll have a lot more success. Hopefully, I, uh, hopefully you found this beneficial. Uh, maybe enlightening, maybe some of the things that you didn't know about the tools that we use today in the industry. Uh, my whole goal with my company, GuruNation.net, is to help you provoke your thought process and help you discover the genius inside each and every one of you. Thanks for letting me share with you today. I hope to see you again soon. But until then, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. You guys have an amazing day.